And for further details from the ground in Kyiv, we have Sviatislav Yurash joining us. He's the Ukrainian MP and head of parliamentary friendship group with India, also a member of the Foreign Policy Committee. Mr. Yurash, casualty figures for the strikes in Ukraine this morning are likely to be uncertain for some time. But has critical infrastructure been hit in Kyiv yet? Yes, that's the goal that Russians seem to have in mind because... All the attacks are aimed at power stations, at the uh, railway station, and basically various different infrastructure points. Not just in Kiev, by the way, all around Ukraine. In my hometown, Lviv, actually, pretty heavy hits were received that's deep in the west of Ukraine. That were received there as well. So it's very clear that Russians essentially were aiming at infrastructure and government Worrying signs indeed, Mr. Urash, that railway lines, etc., are interrupted and critical infrastructure is being impacted. But these missile strikes are also being framed in Russia as attacks on critical infrastructure in Ukraine. But in the Kremlin's thinking, do you believe this is a response to the attack on the Crimean Bridge, which Putin, by the way, called a terrorist attack aimed at destroying the critically important civilian infrastructure of the Russian Federation? Well, no matter what the aim is, this continuous targeting by the Russians of civil infrastructure and the deaths that people have needlessly had all around Ukraine because these attacks simply show that uh, Kremlin basically has its goal in mind, still keeps its vision of um, destruction of the Ukrainian state. Alas, for us, it doesn't matter because, again, we have one goal and one goal in mind, to have the Russians leave our country alone, to decide our country's future on our own. So, therefore, for us, the battle continues to keep Ukraine dependent from Russia. Mr. Rush, would you agree that, in part, Putin wants to quiet anger from Russian hardliners who've actually accused him of failing to wage all-out war against Ukraine? He has failed in every way, and I'm not sure how much this helps him internally. I mean, this is for him a demonstration of strength, and uh, still, we, as we are counting the damage, it's very hard to see how, how this is a demonstration of anything. But Putin's utter lack of uh, planning for any part of the invasion of Ukraine since February. Right. Also, Mr. Yurash, the cadres of Russian war pundits recently have grown more critical of the Kremlin. Would you agree? Well, yes, but uh, basically Kremlin has failed to deliver. It has announced uh, to the world that Ukrainian state does not exist way back in February and that it basically will destroy that state. And when you make such a grandiose claim, then to fail to deliver obviously makes you a mockery for the world. And for us, it's very clearly uh, something that we will uh, not see as any kind of stopping ground for any points that we need to recapture as we liberate more and more of Ukraine. You know, Mr. Yurash, we've been speaking to you since the early days of the invasion. Do you think this is the most intense strikes conducted on behalf of Russia so far in Kyiv? Uh, it will appear that way, but uh, Kyiv was under siege in the earlier days of uh, the invasion, and we have, at that point, have basically seen it all around Kyiv, destruction of enormous kinds and deaths of dear and near to us. So it's not much that we can be scared of at the moment. Right. Experts also saying that Russia believes the strikes will terrorize the Ukrainian civilian population and likely threaten a humanitarian catastrophe. Is that something you guys are going to put up with? Uh, they were aiming at that, but uh, from what I can read from various colleagues of mine from around Ukraine, the work to restore power in those electric power stations the Russians have hit has begun and again we are preparing for Russian attacks in any case. So we'll continue to uh, restore whatever Russians destroy. Right, Mr. Yurash, thank you so much for sparing time for us. There is a growing demand from New Delhi to Johannesburg to Beijing that Putin end his war. But the Russian leader is choosing to respond with new provocations that could widen and prolong this crisis.